So let's jump into it. It's time to kickstart the day. I'd like to introduce you to our first group of speakers. We'll be hearing from Annabelle Blake, Charlotte Allen, Belle Martins, and Carly Daff. These are some of the legends that make up our Canva for Education team. Over to Carly to kick us off. Hello, everyone. So nice to see all of you virtually today. Welcome to our Creative Classroom Community session. This is a session for teachers. We've created a fun workbook that accompanies today's session. So if you'd like to practice what you've learned today or just take some notes, log into Canva, then type this link into your web browser. It will open your very own copy of the workbook so you can get hands on. So hi everyone, I'm Carly. I'm the head of education product here at Canva and so excited to be here today to talk to you about all things creativity and Canva. We're a company with a very ambitious mission to empower the whole world to design. We're doing okay so far with over 65 million monthly active users, doubling in size every year in every country and in over 100 languages. And we're investing in education as be a force for good in the world is our most important core value. So it's absolutely free now and forever. And our goal is to empower creativity and collaboration in every classroom. We want to improve learning outcomes and empower creativity for free. And we believe that creativity and specifically visual communication is a lifelong skill we want to foster in every student. We now have more than 100,000 schools using Canva in the classroom. And it's incredibly rewarding to hear the stories from our teachers and students creating in Canva every day. Our mission for Canva for Education is to empower creativity and collaboration in every learner. So we launched Canva for Education available for all K-12 school districts, schools, teachers and students for free. It includes free access to millions of premium copyright free templates, photos, fonts, icons and videos, group activities for student collaboration, talking presentations that allow you or your students to add your voice and video over the top, the background remover, a really popular pro feature, and COPPA and FERPA compliance for peace of mind, especially when using with children. And integrations into all popular learning management systems like Google Classroom, Canvas, Schoolology, Moodle and more. And the ability to switch on single sign-on for your school or district. And Canva is 100% free for K-12 districts, schools, teachers and students. We would also love to introduce you to Canva creators and specifically education creators. This is a new program within Canva that enables teachers to create, publish and earn from their educational templates in Canva. We are in beta and starting to onboard teachers who are being paid royalties for their amazing teacher resource templates. If you are a certified teacher and a Canva user, or you know a teacher who loves creating educational resources, this is an environment you could thrive in. Follow the QR code link to explore the Education Creator landing page and register your interest to be part of the Education Creator program today. But let's get started with today's session on creative classroom communities. Welcome to Annabelle. Thanks, Carly. Hi, everyone. So I'm Annabelle and I'm the design researcher on the education team here at Canva. So today we're going to be talking about how to harness visual design beyond classroom decorations to design and nurture your classroom community through the environment and how you can support learning outcomes. We're also going to talk about some easy ways you can start using this with Canva in the education product today. So I'm not a teacher. But as the education researcher for Canva, I spend most of my day at work talking to teachers and students from all around the globe. So that's teachers who are teaching grades of all ages and all subjects. And I learn directly from teachers. So what it is that you do, the challenges that you face in the classroom and how we can support you better. So it's these lessons that we are going to explore together today. So what's on the cards? Well, this webinar is inspired by Reggio Emilia's philosophy on the power of the learning environment. And as I mentioned, primarily from lessons from you. So it's the lessons from these educators that we spoke with all around the world that I want to pass on. 
I've broken these lessons down into four main sections. So over the next 20 minutes, we're going to look at how you can design an environment for positive emotions, for accessibility, for belonging, and lastly, for student pride. So it's a stacked session and we are all about practical takeaways here. So I'm going to share some examples and exercises in your workbook that you can get started on right away. And then you're going to end this session with some magical posters, some animated cat gifts and some personalized stickers, but we will get to all of that in due time. I want to start off with a bit of housekeeping first. So first off, I can see the chat. So I'm not sure if, you'll, if I'll be able to keep up, but I encourage you to chat with each other. And I'm going to pause throughout this webinar to ask for suggestions, some ideas. I'm always open to a joke or two. And secondly, you've already heard we've mentioned that there is a matching workbook for this webinar. So if you don't have the workbook yet or you missed that link, you can head to the link on screen here. And in that workbook, you will find some space for taking notes. We're going to talk through three activities that match the prompts in this talk, but there's opportunities to do way more. And really, it's just supposed to be fun. So options, you can choose to do the activities during the webinar. There will be a little bit of time, or you can choose to do it at your own pace. There will be Canva friends in the chat monitoring if anyone gets stuck. And I promise it's a really friendly place to ask questions. So I'm going to start the session with another question. I do love asking questions. So what do we mean when we say the classroom environment? So our meaning of the environment has changed dramatically over the past year. A few years ago, when we mentioned the classroom, everyone thought of this. So four walls, desks, teachers and students. Your students may have attended a physical space every day. That means you could see them working, see them raising their hands, asking questions, sitting quietly doing their work, or perhaps they're being a little bit more mischievous, a whole range of behaviours from being serious to silly. It was all happening there right in front of you. But all of that changed pretty rapidly in 2020. And a lot of that classroom environment was switched and squished into an online learning environment. Students stayed in their home. It was difficult to know when they were getting stuck or to know if they were even engaged in their work. So it was really difficult to gauge. You may have been communicating through an online learning environment, phones, or in many regions, printed materials that you would drop off or post to families. And with the classroom environment changing, we also saw families were more involved than ever. Suddenly, you know, parents and guardians becoming a critical part of the classroom community. And I did see in the chat that we have some parents with us today. So for many of you now, it might be a bit of both. So you may be working with physical materials, posted, printed handouts, whiteboards and worksheets, and with digital materials, learning management system, online quizzes, games and lessons. So we're going to start today with a bit of a warm up. I'm going to begin by asking, again, <laughs> what is one simple tool that can bring the physical and digital world together? And I want you to pop your answers in chat and I'll give you a bit of a clue. It's made up of lots of black and white squares. In fact, you may have already seen one of these earlier on in the presentation. Pixels, presentations, QR codes, <laughs> whiteboard. Yeah, so the answer has already zoomed past. I'm going to talk through some fun and creative ways to use a QR code to bring the best of digital and physical together. This is our first workbook pit stop. So in your workbook, you'll see a little exercise you can play with and it outlines a few quick steps that you can get started using QR codes in Canva. So while we're warming up and you're opening that up, I'm going to get moving and give you some ideas. So you might start by turning every poster in your classroom into an Easter egg hunt with links that link out to interesting educational content through QR codes which you can quickly and easily create in Canva. So in your workbook, you can add a QR code to a sort of imaginary poster, and then you can make a much prettier one later on. But you'll start to get an idea of how you can add QR codes to any printed materials and have them link out to digital experiences. You may create a whole set of role model posters like shown in the example here, and have a QR code link out to websites with more information, a video, an activity, or even an assignment that they could choose themselves. Maybe for a more creative take, you could create a behavioral reward system. So you might print out some flashcards with mystery websites hidden in the QR code. And when rewarding students with free play on devices, they won't know what they've received until they scan the code. They might find something like this website called The Kids Should See This. It's one of my favorite places to find interesting videos from all across the web. And this was a really fun idea that we learned about from a teacher. So maybe you could pop some ideas in the chat around what sort of surprising website you could link students out to that you think that they would enjoy. Or perhaps you want to take your hybrid game to the next level and design virtual classroom websites on Canva. So this is a really simple, bright and visual website that I'm sure many of you are already familiar with. 
So whether you have a hybrid classroom with some students in the classroom and some students still at home, or as a one-off, you have students who are working from home because they're sick and you want to invite families into the classroom, a classroom website is a really great way to keep the community connected. So students can click on content of the day, link out to other content like videos, workshops or games. You can even link a button to your email and they could contact you from a cute little environment that reflects the real classroom. So I hope we're all warmed up and that has sparked some creative ideas from you. Now we're going to get started by looking into the swing of things and explore some simple visual design tips and tricks and Canva templates that will help you create a classroom environment where your students feel confident and ready to learn, where materials are accessible, where students have a strong sense of belonging and your community classroom is singing with pride. First up, we're gonna look at how the environment can play a powerful role in influencing your emotions and how you can use it to create a classroom community where everyone feels calm and confident. So this is an MRI machine. And it doesn't look particularly friendly, does it? In fact, for many people, this is a really terrifying experience. Up to 13% of people having an MRI had a panic attack. And this is something that a group of designers thought about. They asked, how could we make it look friendlier, particularly for children? And this is what they came up with. It's a pretty different experience now, isn't it? The MRI is now part of an ocean faring adventure, which really reduced the negative emotions and experiences there are a lot of redesigned MRI machines now. If you look this up, some of them are space themed, some are decorated like castles, and I even saw an angry bird one. But I want to ask, how does this idea apply to the classroom? And maybe you could pop some of your early thoughts and ideas into the chat. Have you ever seen students feel intimidated or fearful in the classroom? And what are some things that we can do to change their emotional experience? I'm going to dive in a little bit further and start by looking at Max. So did you know that 6 to 17% of the population experience maths anxiety? This means for so many people, no matter how old they are, being presented with maths materials like this is a pretty terrifying experience. This is really important to consider because we know from research that cognitive processes like attention, learning and memory, reasoning and problem solving are negatively impacted by stressful emotions. And I think we can all empathise with that, right? It's very hard to think clearly when we're feeling anxious. So we might ask ourselves, well, how can we make maths a little friendlier? So we can apply the same principles from the MRI example I just gave to classroom materials. This maths worksheet already looks pretty good to start off with, admittedly. It has some warm lavender color and some soft boxes with rounded corners, but I think we can make it a lot friendlier than that by adding cats to this maths worksheet. So I added some cats and I think it's made it a lot more welcoming and frankly, a pretty adorable experience for so many more students. But you can take this further than maths and cats. Maybe you're more of a dog person. Canva has a ginormous graphics library with all the graphics that you need to make friendlier classroom materials from cats to bats or planes or trains, puppies or plants. You can really go wild because all of our templates are customizable. So you know, if cats aren't your jam, no worries. <laughs> Pick something else that you like. And in this example on screen, I was having a bit of a play around with bees. But I want to move on from cats for a moment and talk about colour. Because colour matters too, and it can really influence the classroom mood. So Canva has created matching sets of colours to get you started. So you might pick a bright and energetic colour for a lesson that your class isn't very excited by. Or you might try soft and muted colours when you really want to calm the classroom down. And finally, let's spice things up a bit by adding a bit of wiggle and pop. So Canva is filled with gifts to add a bit of eye-catching motion, excitement, curiosity, and play to your lesson. So if you head to your workbook, you will see a cat hiding behind a plant, like this little cutie. And there's going to be some instructions on how you can work with gifts by selecting animated as a search filter. And you can have all sort of fun here. You could even search for a little hat for the cat. You could dress it up. I'll leave the creative direction for you and I'll move on while you're playing around. So I'm sure you're getting as excited as I am seeing all the fun elements and cute cats that you can begin to incorporate into your designs. With so many elements to choose from, it's pretty easy for exciting to end up becoming overwhelming. And so I want to just spend a little moment seeing what that looks like. So here I went a little overboard. You can see how there is so much going on with all the different elements mixed together. So I still made this on Canva. It's fun and each graphic on their own is pretty beautiful, but together it's just too stimulating. 
Students don't know where to look first or where to focus their attention. We've got party dinosaurs, blobs, flowers, cats, photos. I couldn't choose, so I just put it all in there. Let's move on from that page, though, for a second. I won't subject you to it any longer. Tell me in the chat, how did that slide make you feel with everything that was going on? Overwhelming. Yeah, a bit confused. <laughs> me too, and I made it. So we could describe this design as one with high complexity. So everything looks different, different colours, different fonts, nothing matches. So instead of a harmonious environment, we end up with a random, distracting and chaotic one. Too much stimulation or too loud, as someone said. Exactly. So only when an environment has an intermediate level of stimulation does it have a positive effect on learning outcomes. And when I say stimulation, I'm talking about how exciting and vibrant the classroom is and how energised it makes me feel. So yes, we want our students to be excited, but we don't want them to be overexcited. So how do we find this sweet spot? Well, I'm going to focus on two components that are within your control. We can make the environment more or less stimulating by changing the amount of colour and by changing the amount of complexity. So we're going to go back to our friend colour again. Colour is all of the colour elements in the environment, on the classroom walls, on the materials in your digital learning management system, on anything you print, colour can be everywhere. But rather than picking 30 colours, all in different shades and brightnesses, we can reduce stimulation by just picking a few. And that doesn't mean the colours have to be boring. I'm not here to suck all the fun out. They can still be bright. It just means using a little less. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned using Canvas colour palettes as a way to really help you select just a few that still look really great together. Next, we're going to look at the second piece of the puzzle, which is complexity. So complexity is a measure of how the different elements in the room combine to create a visually coherent and structured or a random and chaotic environment. So is the environment scattered with different fonts, colours, styles and characters, each working independently like this set, where we've got a photorealistic leaf, a watercolour apple, an icon of a presenter, 3D monster sort of thing and a bunch of different clip art? Or does everything match like you can see in this example? So why does this matter? Well, low diversity helps students focus, it reduces cognitive load, it creates a sense of cohesion across lessons and it supports learning outcomes. So there's less unique components and elements that we don't need to individually process. And like everyone said in the chat, it's less overwhelming. How can you achieve this quickly and easily? Well, one way is to use Canvas themed kits. We have a number of different themes. I don't actually think we have a cat theme yet. Perhaps you could build one and share it with another teacher who likes cats or if you're into dogs like me, make that, share it with me. And if you prefer to get started straight away, we have plenty of other bright, fun and engaging kits that have matching materials. This is really useful because it gives you a variety of materials that match from classroom posters to presentations and worksheets. It's all themed across different materials and all done for you. So you can use themes in different ways. I've seen teachers use themes to cover their entire classroom. So everything is matching with one central theme or brand, which I'll get into a little bit later if you want to call it that. One teacher was using teaching multiple subjects in grades and they picked a different theme for each subject. And they spoke about how this helps students context switch, find materials easier and categorise their work. And some teachers even built themes around their school mascot. I saw an example where everything was Husky themed and that was pretty fun. So I've got another question for you all. Whilst we have a lot of themes in Canva ultimately, I do know that how personal teaching in the classroom is for educators. So it's important to be both professional but also personal to build a better connection with students. I want to ask you, what is your dream classroom theme? You may want to build a theme yourself from scratch. Owls. Oh, how adorable. Oceans. Underwater. <laughs> Star Wars. I love these ideas. So if you have a theme that doesn't exist in Canva yet, then you can absolutely make it yourself. Because I know that nothing is ever a perfect fit for you in your classroom. And every classroom is unique, so you can customise your kit. Personalise it by picking a class kit. You can find this on the template homepage. You might pick a B theme like I did here. You can edit an existing design or you could start entirely from scratch. That means changing the colours, swapping out the graphics and changing the document type from a presentation to a video if you wanted. I'm loving these ideas. <laughs> Inside Out is a great one. So we're going to move on to section three now, environment and belonging. It is all so fun designing all sorts of materials for our students to interact with and learn from. And almost all teachers know what it is like to prepare your classroom materials, but keeping in mind the students who will eventually be using them. Because every classroom is unique. 
When students arrive at your door in the classroom and enter the virtual learning environment, they bring with them different backgrounds, stories, interests, dreams, and aspirations. And we know schools are really critical time for developing positive self-identity and a really strong sense of confidence. When students can't see themselves reflected in the world around them, they may begin to feel invisible or unimportant. But most importantly, they lose the opportunity to see people like them and develop a really positive perception of their ability to succeed. You've probably heard this saying before, and it does ring true. If they can't see it, they can't be it. But when they can see themselves in the curriculum and it connects to their identities and experiences and they begin to feel a sense of belonging, it's a changed world. We see increases in grade point averages, student participation, self-image, critical thinking skills and graduation rates. So that's so much goodness. And really, it's what I know we're all about. So we can think of the classroom as a mirror. When they look at it, what do they see reflected back? We can help students to see themselves, their backgrounds, their interests, their thoughts, their creations in the environment by creating and displaying really diverse classroom materials. And I want to throw it over to you for a minute. What has worked for you as some ways to create an inclusive and inspiring classroom minute? And whilst you're sharing with each other in the chat, I'm going to talk about ways that we can build on that in this session. Primarily, I want to look at how you can focus on classroom participation today as a really great way to create a classroom environment that truly reflects the students within it. Absolutely, Abigail said, make students a participants in creating the classroom culture. That's exactly what I want to speak about. So how can you do that? How can you invite students into the classroom creation process? Well, you could create opportunities for students to express themselves by allowing them to make their own designs. You can invite students to also use Canva for Education for free by inviting them under your class tab on your account and they can get started straight away. And here are some examples from a recent project in the real world where students created posters for their school and for their local area. A great exercise to do together, especially at the start of the year, is to do an about me poster or a video. It's essentially just a collage for students or teachers where you can display your interests. And you can design these however you want. We do have some templates to get you started. And then you can print these posters out and reflect the classroom community on the wall. Another idea, if you remember in the last section, we spoke about a class theme. Some of you may be already thinking of this as a classroom brand. So a really neat way to create a sense of belonging is to bring your students into that process. So make them more than observers, really invite them in to have conversations on how the content could be more engaging for them. This isn't just because you're being nice. It has a lot of positive benefits because when students have a sense of ownership and they know that their ideas matter, they become more engaged in the environment, which we know through research really improves academic outcomes. So you could do this activity through a template like this one, where you ask your students what the classroom should look like, feel like, and sound like. And we're getting a bit of a B theme, I think, coming through this one. So perhaps your classroom is, is a little bit like a hive. So after all of that, Imagine how much pride students would have in seeing themselves as being part of a community and part of a classroom that's vibrant, engaging, and that most importantly, they took a part in building. This last section, we're going to talk about showing off your classroom community and enabling students to share their work with pride. We've heard stories about how students are proud of what they create in Canva and observed that so much learning and confidence building happens on the classroom walls or the kitchen fridge at home. Teachers told us stories about students who perhaps weren't that confident in their drawing skills, but felt like they could create a really impressive and professional project on Canva. Everything from posters to getting really creative with coding games, with characters that design in Canva. We even heard about students who've created small businesses, designed logos, sold stickers, and started community library projects in their local area. It's really impressive stuff, and, and we're proud of students too. We want to help them show all of that hard work off. When students' work is visible, it creates an environment where students are proud of their work, they're proud of their classroom, and they're proud of each other, and they're more likely to learn the material. So if you have a physical classroom wall, you can print and hang their work for everyone to admire. And there's a way, like, seeing their peers' work really allows students to develop pride beyond their own work and to feel pride of their classroom and their classmates. This is something that perhaps many of you are already doing today, just like these photos. You could actually also add a little bit of sparkle to their printed work with a personalised sticker to celebrate and give feedback. Somebody's already said that they're making stickers in Canva. So stickers aren't a radical new idea, but a personalised sticker is extra special because it came from you and it is on theme with the classroom brand and the identity that they helped design. So in your workbook, 
we've put a little bit of a sticker exercise for you to play around with and instructions on how to print. You should see on this page a little exercise to help you get creative with stickers. This is just an example, and down the bottom are instructions for printing on your own. You can change the font, the colours and the images. You can really make it yours, and if maybe you have a Bitmoji, you could put that in there too. But perhaps you don't have physical classroom walls or you're still doing a lot of work online. I saw someone mention that they're working in a college, so maybe you're doing a lot of online submissions. Well, you can still leave expressive, sparkly and personalised digital stickers, and you can also send student work home if you're working with families as a view link. So this means that you're using the same stickers. They could be stuck on a printed workbook or online. So it creates a really great sense of cohesion. And in your workbook, we have an exercise where you can play around with sticker feedback. So it makes it just a little bit more expressive. So if you have a colleague or a friend who uses Canva in the same school team as you, you could tag them by using the at symbol and give them some hype. So even if an answer is wrong, like in this exercise, you could leave a little bit of a visual cue and make the feedback a positive experience. I'm pretty sure that 56 plus 15 is in 70. So perhaps something went a little amiss here and it needs more cats. And for our last example, we're going to end with a bang. So help teach students take that pride home and share it with their family with perhaps a, a, we've created here a printed certificate. We have hundreds of certificate templates to get you started. As always, though, you can always customize and start from scratch. We're going to take it back to the warm up at the very start here where we spoke about QR codes. So you could add a little digital surprise with a QR code that links to a digital copy of the certificate to really celebrate with students their work with motion and even a little jingle with music that you can add on Canva, which I'm going to show on the next slide for a second. Pretty fun. So I want to invite you to share one last time in the chat. What is one thing that you're going to take away from this webinar or experiment with in your own classroom? Themes to make it friendly, stickers, QR codes. Yeah, the right amount of stimulation goes a long way. I'm <laughs> seeing a lot of love for stickers and QR codes in here. Colours, classroom brand, excellent. <laughs> so this brings us to the end of our webinar and some really great lessons that we learned about classroom community this year, but I really hope it's just the start. We've left you today with this workbook that you've hopefully already been in, but if you missed that, here's the link again, and that's very much yours to take home, where you can work on easily creating an inclusive, inspiring classroom community and a vibrant home base where students can really thrive. I'm gonna be throwing over to Belle and Charlotte for our next session. Charlotte is gonna be talking about how you can app smash with Canva, and put it together with the rest of your tech stack to create new and amazing things. So I want to thank you so much for having me today and for all of your great ideas and input in the chat. It's been so wonderful to see all the vibrant ideas that are coming through. And I really hope that you have a lot of fun in the upcoming sessions. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Annabelle. That was such an informative session and I hope that everyone got lots of ideas of what they can do in their own classroom. It brings us to the next session. And this session is at Smashing Your Canva Designs, and we are really excited to have you all join us today from all over the world. And the audience for today's session is teachers. So we hope we can inspire you to explore some app smashing in your own teaching. So let's get app smashing all across the world. Thanks, Charlotte. And hi, everyone. I'm Belle, and I am the Design Educator Lead for Education at Canva. Before joining Canva, I was a teacher and edtech specialist and have 12 years of experience supporting educators and students to integrate technologies in K-12 learning. And hey everyone, I'm Charlotte and I'm an education specialist here at Canva. I'm a former primary school teacher with nearly 10 years experience teaching all across Australia and I love empowering teachers and students to develop a love of learning and I get to do this as part of my role at Canva. We can't wait to see your engagement in the chat and feel free to ask questions as we go along. All right, so today we've got a jam-packed session planned where we'll be exploring all the wonderful integrations that Canva has to offer. We'll speak about some ideas of how you can use them in your Canva designs and ways that you can use them in the classroom with students. Our aim for the session is to give you some hands-on ideas that you can apply in your classroom as soon as tomorrow. So let's have a look at our agenda. First, we'll be starting with content apps and how you can level up your designs with integrations in Canva. We'll then have a look at publishing apps such as learning management systems and ThingLink. We'll give you some app smashing quick tips on how you can level up your content in other classroom apps you use. 
And we're going to show you some resources for getting started with Canva for Education. First of all, do you have a Canva for Education account? If it's new for you, here's a quick overview in case you don't yet know about our free product for teachers. Canva for Education gives you free access to Canva Pro, which includes millions of images, fonts, videos, and templates. You can remove the background from photos, create presentations, add in your voiceover and video. You can assign activities to your students and they can return and complete them to you for feedback. And with your dedicated classroom space, you can share class templates, designs, and set up student collaboration groups. And the great thing about Canva for Education is that there's no limit to how many teachers or students from your school can join. There are no hidden charges or upgrades. We've also partnered with some popular tools like Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, Canvas, Schoology, and many more to create amazing experiences and workflows for students and teachers. Our aim is to keep things simple and save you time. So if you haven't already signed up to Canva for Education, head on over to canva.com forward slash edu sign up. It's 100% free. First, I want to ask you, what exactly is app smashing, especially in education? Comment in the chat. Let us know, are you an app smashing expert or are you yet to try it? Or are you curious and that's why you're here? I am. <laughs> no one knows. Some people know. Okay, this session will be good for you then. Let's get started. Well, you are most likely app smashed without even realising you have, especially during last year with many of us undertaking the massive task of online learning. App smashing is a process of using multiple apps to create projects or complete tasks. It's a way of using technology to make your resources more interactive, engaging and exciting. Here on the screen, you can see just a sample of some of the apps that work right within the Canva interface. You can use all of these tools without even leaving your Canva design. With so many tools now integrated, you can design quickly and make your presentations, designs and classroom resources more interactive and reduce your workload. Okay, thanks Charlotte. If you're a regular Canva user, I'm sure you're familiar with the Canva side menu full of tools you can use regularly, like text, elements, images and audio. But have you ever explored the More button? This gives you access to Canva's free app store. In the sidebar, towards the bottom of the page, you'll be able to locate this. Once you click on More, you will see that it is home to a host of free apps and integrations you can access right from within the Canva interface. While we can't look at all of them today, we've chosen a few we think you'll love and will enhance your education designs. Okay, so let's go into part one. We're going to explore how you can seamlessly add content from a huge variety of sources in just a couple of clicks. We will cover how you take your designs that step further and level up by adding in interactive elements from a range of integrations with just a few simple steps. Let's find out how. Okay, firstly, you can easily connect your Google Drive, Dropbox and Flickr accounts. When you have connected to these services, you can easily import images and videos that you have already uploaded in these apps to Canva and add them to any design. So to do this, click the More tab from your side panel, select the app you want to use, click Connect or Connect your account, log in on the prompt that will appear and allow Canva to access your content. Once this app is connected, your folders and media files will appear on the side panel. And you will need to do this simply by clicking on the image or video to add it to your design. Okay, let's explore our first integration, which is of course, YouTube. Using this integration, you can easily make videos a seamless part of your presentation, poster or lesson. You can search for a YouTube clip without having to leave the Canva interface. Step one is to find YouTube by going to that more tab, Click YouTube and search for the perfect video to engage your students. Click to insert the video, then resize to suit your design. You don't have to leave Canva and you don't have to copy and paste links in from YouTube. All you have to do is open the app in that more tab. The integration allows you to embed useful clips to help bring your activities to life. Videos are a great way to engage the current generation of learners. Younger students also love to sing, dance and interact with videos. So why not bring them into your designs? All right, let's jump into your workbook. So this is your first activity. If you jump to page 28, you can have a go at inserting a YouTube video yourself. Just go to the elements menu, select more, find YouTube and search for a video to add to your workbook. 
Now let's have a look at Google Maps. This integration is great. You can use it within Canva to insert an interactive map of any location. Simply find Google Maps in the More tab, search up the exact address, point of interest, or even a whole country, and click to insert it into your design. It can be used to enhance lessons, activities, and expand learning opportunities. What a great way to include some interactive elements in your instructional materials and get students exploring different places and spaces. Students can also insert a map into their own work as shown on the screen. It could be really useful for more detailed field trip instructions so students and parents know how to reach a specific off-site event. There are endless possibilities. Once the map is inserted, all you have to do is double click to interact with it. So a quick question for our teachers who are here in the chat. I can see you're all putting in lots of great comments. What ideas pop into your mind for using this integration in your classroom with your students? Pop some ideas into the chat. Thanks, Belle. Next up, we have Bitmoji. So Canva allows you to directly connect your Bitmoji account. You go to the More tab, find Bitmoji, and once you're connected, you can search using keywords to find the perfect addition to your worksheets, presentation, or classroom posters. On the screen, you can see that I got creative and added my Bitmoji some stickers for my students. You can use your Bitmoji to personalize stickers or badges. This idea links perfectly to what Annabelle just mentioned in her Building Classroom Communities deck. Students could even create their own Bitmojis and you could use them to personalize your classroom content. Think about how awesome it would look if students' Bitmojis could be included in your classroom labels, posters and awards. Why don't you connect your Bitmoji account after this webinar and see what funny ideas you can come up with to motivate your students. Next up is Typeform. We get a lot of requests for form integration with Canva. Well, this is how you can do it. You can now add type forms directly into your Canva design. To start with, you create your form or survey on the type form website. Inside the editor, as shown here on the screen, you can create question prompts, polls, and more to engage your students and gain some powerful insights into their learning. Once you've created your type form, head back into Canva and connect your Typeform account. You only have to do this once. You can find Typeform and some other advanced app smashing tools in the embed button, and you can alternatively search for any app for easy access. Once you are connected in Canva, anytime you create a new Typeform survey, it automatically appears in the window on the right, ready for you to insert into your presentation. Once you've inserted your Typeform, this is what it will look like in the present mode. It will become an interactive element in your presentation. It's a really great way to add interactivity to a resource you are sharing with your students. And once the students have answered the questions, you can go back into your Typeform account and analyze the data. Heads up though, the free Typeform plan currently allows 20 responses. We are really excited to announce that we've developed an interactive draw tool. This tool allows you to select a pen, marker or highlighter, which you can use to color, draw or mark directly onto the Canva design. You can also have a play around with the different colors and transparency. This is a game changer as it turns every Canva design into an interactive teaching tool. As you can see on the screen, app smashing this tool would be perfect for modeled and shared lessons. The draw tool turns this design into interactive hands-on learning. You can display something like this on your interactive whiteboard or on a screen in front of the class and watch your students begin to interact with it and get involved. You could also do something like your morning welcome slides with a feelings check-in using some templates from Canva. It's good to mention that you can keep the drawing on your design or you can easily remove it. The opportunities are endless. Time to hop back into your workbook activity and go to page 29. You can locate the draw tool underneath the more tab. Select a pen, thickness, transparency and color and see if you can add a smiley face to your workbook page. Thanks, Charlotte, and thanks to everyone for sharing your ideas. I can see a lot of love for all our integrations in the chat and some amazing ideas for how we can use YouTube, the pen tool, and also Google Maps. On to our next app. This one is also fantastic. It is the QR Codes app. This is a great integration that lets teachers and students easily add a QR code to any design in just a few clicks. These are perfect for posters, brochures, flashcards, or choice boards for your students in the classroom. 
All you need to do is enter the URL into the QR app and Canva will create the QR code for you. Perhaps your students are doing a book report. They could design a poster for the book and embed a link to a short video of themselves talking about the book using a QR code. They could also design a poster or brochure to advocate for a cause that they really care about and display it around their school campus. As a teacher, you could also add videos to how-to posters using QR codes to guide your students in the classroom, or even create an online bookshelf for students using QR codes and images of your class's favorite book covers. How can you see yourself using QR codes in Canva? Keep those great ideas coming in the chat. That's so handy, Belle. And next up, we have Gippy. This is the world's largest library of GIFs, and it's available in the Canva app library. It's another fun way to app smash, which can motivate even the toughest of critics. At any time during your design process, you can browse the Giphy library and find the perfect GIF to enhance your activity or presentation. It's a fantastic way to add some fun into the classroom, create laughter, and make learning relatable, all whilst keeping your students' attention. I wonder if this week you can make your students laugh by using a GIF in your lessons or designs. You can have a go at doing this yourself in the workbook on page 30. You can go to the More tab, find the Giphy library, and search Wow. Once you find a GIF you like, click to insert and resize it to fit your design. Okay, part two is about publishing apps. So we're going to have a look at how Canva works seamlessly with go-to classroom tools and learning management systems. From your dedicated classroom space, you can share work and assignments to Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams and Canvas LMS, just to name a few. Let's look at how this works with Google Classroom and how you can publish content once you've created it in your account. It's a very similar process for other platforms too. So it's incredibly easy to turn Canva templates into assignments for your students. Using these four steps that I'm going to go over, they will be assigned with their own individual copy of the assignment to complete. First, you need to start by creating a design for your students. Start with any template and customize it. Once you're ready to share it with your students, use the top right, select the down arrow and pick Google Classroom. Choose a class you want to share with, select the assignment option, then fill in the details and select who to assign it to, the topic and the post and done. Once a student logs into Google Classroom, it opens the assignment you have created and they can click on the link and they'll be prompted to use the template button right in the Canva editor. Once students have completed their work, they can press send to teacher and you will be able to comment and give feedback on their designs. And our next app is ThingLink. We know that many teachers are already app smashing Canva and ThingLink. It is a popular platform used to create engaging visual experiences with images, videos and 360 media. Did you know that you can design with Canva straight from within the ThingLink editor? All you have to do is select Design with Canva option when you create a new design in ThingLink. Get inspired by creating an infographic in Canva and using ThingLink to connect to external data sources and resources. Or you could create an interactive class timetable that links to lesson plans, activities, or videos. Another fun way to app smash ThingLink and Canva is by creating choice boards for students. On this screen, you can see that we have a range of templates in the Canva library that are an ideal for using with ThingLink. Your students can also combine visual designs with engaging multimedia content creation with this integration. This provides endless possibilities for design. Here you can see that we have imported a Canva design in our ThingLink account, and we are able to edit the design, add tags and interactive features all without leaving the ThingLink interface. You can use all of the beautiful Canva designs in your ThingLink editor. In this example, we have an information poster template. How good is that? Thanks, Belle. I know we're going quite quickly, but we have so much to tell you, so you'll be able to watch this all in the recording and follow along. So we're now starting part three, which is quick yet fun app smashing tips. Let's explore some other ways you can use Canva to level up your content in some other platforms. First up is Flipgrid. So Canva has an upcoming exciting partnership with Flipgrid that will be announced at the end of the month. We can't wait to tell you more about it. On this slide, you can see just a little sneak peek of the amazing designs that will be included. By outsmashing Canva and Flipgrid, you can enhance your Flipgrid topics and instructions to help improve student motivation and engagement. 
Today, we're going to have a little look at how you can create some beautiful designs to import into Flipgrid and use with your students. First up, to use Canva in Flipgrid, you can search for any template that suits your lesson. Pick a template and create your design in Canva. On the screen, you can see that I've created a Meet the Teacher poster to use as an example for students. Once completed, click on the share button and choose download. Choose a file type PNG or JPEG. Next, open up your topic in Flipgrid and you can add your title and description. Scroll right the way down to topic media and you will see a range of options. Depending on your resource type, pick accordingly. So for this example, we will use image. Find your downloaded Canva image and insert into Flipgrid. By adding some Canva designs as visual prompts, this brings another level of engagement to your Flipgrid boards. Students can use them as a spot to refer back to and a scaffold if they get stuck. They are also just a really nice alternative to only using your face in a video. Another way that you can use Flipgrid is video. So Canva has a huge range of virtual backgrounds you can use. There is one for every lesson. You can use Canva's video and recording studio to create multimedia instructions for your students. First, you choose a template to customize and suit your needs. Then you can record directly in Canva or you can upload a video you've already created. You can see on the screen here that I inserted a video of myself onto the activity slide. Once you're finished, hop back into Flipgrid and you can add your video under where it says topic media. Students now have video instruction alongside a visual prompt to assist them with answering the questions you have set. This is a really fantastic way to boost student engagement. And it's ideal in situations like last year and this year of hybrid and remote learning, not just in the classroom. Next up, who here uses Seesaw? Seesaw is a platform which creates a really powerful learning loop between students, teachers, and families. Seesaw's capabilities make it the perfect tool to app smash with Canva. App smashing Canva and Seesaw can take your lessons and activities to a whole new level. You can create engaging Canva designs in many different ways. Over the next few slides, I'm going to show you some ideas on how you can use Canva to create engaging instructional videos, lesson activities and announcements to share on Seesaw. First, let's use Canva to plan a lesson about counting. You can see on the screen that I've created this presentation about counting, but I want to turn it into a talking presentation. So I click on share and I choose present and record. It takes me to Canva's recording studio. Here I can add in some voice instructions and video instructions and teach along to the presentation. You can see here on the screen that a little video of myself pops up in the bottom corner. And when you download this, it stays on your presentation. This is perfect for remote learning as you can attach valuable teaching moments to your presentation. Once this is complete, I'm gonna open up Seesaw and I'm going to add it to an activity. I can do this by clicking on add multimedia instructions. And there are a couple of ways you can attach it. You could copy a link or you could download it and then insert it. Do note that if you use a link and your students open it, they don't need to have a Canva login, especially if they're really young students. It will just open up a new window for them to watch it in. Students now have access to an eye-catching, engaging scaffold to help them complete the mathematics task. You can also use Canva to create some student work templates for Seesaw. So on the left, you can see that I'm using this counting worksheet in Canva. I'm going to click on share and download all of the pages as a PDF. Now that I'm ready to open up Seesaw and create an activity, I can upload this PDF as a student template so all students can edit and complete it. On the screen in a minute, you will see that if I scroll right down to the bottom of the Seesaw task, there is an Add Student Template button. I can click here and I have the option to be able to upload my files from my device. I find my Canva design and I attach it to the task. You can even add PDFs that have more than one page and it automatically syncs in Seesaw. It's as easy as that. 
Once it's uploaded, I can save my activity and it's ready to assign to my student. The final way you could use, well, there's many other ways, but for today, is you Seesaw with Canva announcement template that you can customize with a click of a button. To find these templates, you search for Seesaw in the search bar in Canva, and you will see an array of different templates you can use. These templates are designed to be colorful, eye-catching, and perfect for making class announcements as they will capture your audience's attention. And lastly, we have collaborated with an exciting education platform called Wonderopolis to create a collection of templates your students can use. Wonderopolis is a site full of amazing wonders and new learning. You can search Wonderopolis templates in Canva. They can be assigned to students using Canva and are perfectly crafted to help them explain their new learning from Wonderopolis. You could take your app smashing further and use other tools that you've learned today, like QR codes, videos, and GIFs to really bring new learning to life. Now, that was a lot of new learning, and I hope you can all rewatch it. So over to you, Belle, to wrap up. Thanks so much, Charlotte. Before we wrap up this app smash session, we have a number of resources that we would like to share with you. First one, if you're new to Canva for Education, we have a very helpful onboarding guide for teachers to give you all the tips and tricks to use Canva in your classroom. It will help you become confident and get ready to get your creative ideas flowing. Either scan the QR code or check out the link in the chat, which we're going to post very soon. We would also love for you to join our Facebook group for teachers. Here we post our new features, templates, we have published and you can reach us directly with any questions or chat to other teachers using Canva in the classroom. It's a great community aimed at empowering teachers and there are so many amazing ideas that are shared by teachers all over the world. And we'll pop a link in the chat for that as well. Awesome. And that concludes our presentation for today. We hope you have a brain full of new learning and have learned some handy tips and tricks for app smashing with Canva. But up next, we have a session led by Carly and Belle. It's all about visual thinking for 21st century learning. It's a really great presentation, which will provide you with lots of new learning and hands-on way to incorporate into your classroom. Handing over to you, Belle. Thanks so much, Charlotte. And I'm going to take you into our new section now, which is Workshop on Visual Thinking for 21st Century Learning. This session is for teachers, and we're going to take you through some of the great ways that you can use Canva for education in your classroom. So just a reminder, if you're just coming on, you can get a fun workbook that we have that accompanies today's session. But first, I'm going to introduce you to another great presenter today to take us through this presentation, introducing Carly. Hi, everyone. I'm Carly, and I'm the group product lead here at Canva. And specifically, I head up our Canva for Education product. I've been in ed tech for the past six years, and I just love innovating in this space. Thanks so much, Carly. And if you haven't met me before in a previous session, I'm Belle and I am the Design Educator Lead for Education at Canva. And before joining Canva, I was a teacher and EdTech specialist and really excited to be here with you today. We have a great session for you. We are going to go and explore great ways that students can use visual thinking and visual communication with Canva to enhance their learning. We're going to show you our Canva for Education product. This is a fantastic product and we would love you to sign up today so you can get access and your students can get access to all the features we've been talking about. So what do you get if you sign up for Canva for Education? You and your students get access to all pro features and templates for free. This includes millions of premium images, fonts, videos and templates. It includes features such as background remover photos and the ability to add voiceover and video to your presentations. And the great thing is that you can also publish assignments for your students to complete in Canva. So with Canva for Education, students can visually communicate their learning in a variety of creative ways, such as posters, infographics, videos, and comic strips. But what about capturing student learning at the beginning or during the learning process? 
At Canva, we believe that supporting students with creative tools for thinking and reasoning during the process of learning is just as important as demonstrating learning at the end. Today, we are going to explore how Canva can be a powerful tool to support visual thinking techniques, as well as visual communication. We're going to show you how you can empower learners with creativity and collaboration in the modern hybrid classrooms of today. So having a quick look at our agenda, Carly will first be introducing visual thinking and how it enhances learning. We'll be showing you how you can quickly and easily get students started with visible thinking routines in Canva. We'll also be having a look at the different ways students can use Canva to visually communicate and celebrate their learning. And we'll be finishing off with an awesome Q&A. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Okay, over to Carly for a deep dive into visual thinking. Thanks, Belle. We all process information from pictures thousands of times a day. Visual thinking is essentially learning things by visually processing them. And in the classroom, it's a way for learners to externalize their internal thinking processes and organize their thoughts. We are all visual thinkers. And what's more, we're very, very fast visual thinkers. Think of the last time you were driving. It only takes us 150 milliseconds for a symbol to be processed and 100 milliseconds to attach a meaning to it. We can quickly look at a sign and process the risks ahead at a glance in visual form without needing to stop and read a really detailed description. And visuals bring fuzzy ideas to life. I want you to close your eyes. Think of your favourite tree. What comes to mind? An essay on a tree? The sensation of the breeze? Perhaps the look and feel of a tree is like an image in your mind. Perhaps the concept is a little fuzzier. It's hard to grasp and quickly explain with words alone. That's where visual creativity tools can come in to help bring these fuzzy concepts to life in new visual ways and to bring to life new meaning. Thanks, Carly. And what does this look like in the classroom? Let's explore. In the classroom, learners can do this by bringing concepts to life through playing with images, icons and shapes. It helps students develop thinking with learning content across any subject area. Bringing visual thinking into your classrooms can have an incredible impact on learning. It can help students to simplify complex ideas, solve problems quickly and easily, and it also enhances retention. Use visual thinking to get students to quickly workshop new ideas. With Canva, they can use visual representations by selecting graphics from the element panel to represent and combine ideas easily. With Canva for Education, students get access to all of these premium graphics for free. They can easily search and add any graphic for any learning topic right in the editor without having to leave Canva. In this example, a student is quickly and easily able to visually workshop the main themes in Othello. Canva also has a range of brainstorm templates that can be used to capture students thinking visually. In this example, the idea book brainstorm template was used to quickly workshop thinking on climate change. Students can use the text boxes provided to label their visual thinking or replace them with graphics, symbols, and shapes. Brainstorm templates are also great for student collaboration or whole class brainstorming. Simply share the edit link to your design to get all students workshopping ideas together visually in real time. Students can also access the new Canva drawing tool and you might've seen this in our previous session, Charlotte. Simply go to more and select draw to use the pen, marker or highlighter tools in different colors right on your brainstorm. It's great for categorizing, highlighting or making connections between different concepts. And here's another idea, visual note taking. It's another great way that students can use visual thinking in Canva to workshop their ideas freely. This form of note-taking boosts comprehension and retention. With this technique, students use images, structures, connectors, and text to map out ideas and the interrelationships between them. And with Canva, students can also use animated graphics to bring their notes to life. It's a great tool for learning as they can record information in a way that makes sense for their own thought process. And there are so many ways that students can do this in Canva. To get started, simply use any blank template like a presentation or a brainstorm. This will give students the creative freedom to visually map out their ideas in their own way. 
It can also be a great tool for formative assessment during the learning process and provides you with an insight into what students do or don't understand. Introducing visual note taking as part of learning also gives students a new set of skills that they can use as a study tool. Visual thinking makes ideas accessible for pre-verbal students. Students can easily go from visual to words when they are learning, and it is a great technique for students to plan writing. It is also powerful for representations that are difficult to understand, like learning a second language. And you can also take your student's language learning to the next level by using the present and record tool in Canva. Students can record themselves in the Canva recording studio right in the editor. They can use visual graphics to represent words or phrases and record themselves saying the words in the language they are learning. You can also use this technique in different subject areas to help students with complex concepts or technical vocabulary. Visual thinking encompasses a variety of creative thinking techniques. And with Canva, you can easily create visual activities in different subject areas to facilitate creative thinking. Go to your workbook and head on to page 28 and try out this creative visual activity by our Canva evangelist, George Lee. In this activity, students created a self-portrait image inspired by Frida Kahlo and her use of symbolism. First, they used Canva's graphic elements to create their self-portrait. And then they wrote notes to explain how their own symbolism used reflected their personality. Get creative, give this a go for yourself, and we also have a link to the lesson template that you can use with your class. In a small, simple way, visual thinking exercises can make dry, daunting tasks more fun, but it can also have a larger lifetime impact on developing critical creativity as a critical 21st century skill. Creativity is the ability for students to develop novel and useful solutions to problems. With visual thinking activities, you can nurture creativity in the classroom that students can then apply in design thinking and problem-based learning. Sir Ken Robinson put it best when he said, creativity now is as important in education as literacy. It's a lifelong skill we want to foster in every student. It enables them to play around with ideas in new and interesting ways and to apply them to problems. According to the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report, complex problem solving, critical thinking and creativity are the three most important skills students will need to thrive. Okay, thank you very much, Carly. Now we're going to explore visible thinking routines and how we can guide student thinking in Canva. Over to you. Visible thinking routines are great tools for fostering deep thinking and a better understanding of content. They help students structure their ideas and reasoning and make ideas visible and accessible. What makes them routines as opposed to strategies is they can be used over and over again in the classroom at different stages of the learning process. With Canva, you can easily get started with graphic organizer, mind map or online whiteboard templates. And with access to all pro assets, students can use visual thinking techniques to document their thinking. To get started, search for a template and customize it to create a digital activity for your students to complete. In this example, we have used a Venn diagram template to compare two biomes. It's quick and easy to customize by changing the text title and labels. You can also add graphics to suit your learning content and with thousands of graphics available in the elements panel, it's easy to design no matter what the subject matter is. On page 33 of your workbook, you can try this for yourself with our graphic elements. We also have a link to our graphic organizer templates in Canva. These are a great way to get started with visual thinking routines in your classroom. Thanks, Carly, and we hope that our page numbers are aligning now. Please have a look in your workbook and you'll get access to all these amazing templates. From problem solving trees to Venn diagrams, we have you covered. Just search Graphic Organizer in Canva to access quality educational templates to get started with visible thinking routines. They are useful in any subject area and can help students organize their thoughts or be used as a pre-writing tool. You can find classic literature comparisons, narrative outlines, story planners, and essay planners, just to name a few. And the thing about visible thinking routines in Canva is that learners have the flexibility to use text, shapes, symbols, icons, or the drawing tool to communicate their ideas. It's very flexible.
And with the undo function and easy customization, workshopping thinking in the Canva editor gives students a safe place for ideation throughout the learning process. With Canva, it's also easy to use a blank design and create your own custom graphic organizer in any way you like. Use shapes, lines, and text boxes to build your design and get creative by customizing and layering your elements. It is free and easy to share the amazing resources you create with your colleagues. You can also duplicate and customize your designs to differentiate learning or reuse your visible thinking routines for different classes or subjects. With Canva for Education, it's easy to assign activities for students to complete and return to you for feedback. You can assign in Canva or connect to LMS and work with the tools you already use in your classroom, such as Google Classroom, Schoology, Microsoft Teams, and Canvas LMS. It's a great way to truly understand where they are in their learning and to provide formative feedback to help them to develop. We'll first need to make sure that your students have been added to your Canva class. So please make sure you sign up and invite your students to Canva to get this to work. You can then assign an activity simply by going to the share menu and selecting assignment. Students will receive their own copy to edit and return back to you. You can leave feedback on their design by adding comments. We've got these awesome new stickers for visual feedback as well. With Canva, students can also collaborate together on designs. Collaboration is important. It increases student confidence, motivation, and higher order thinking. It's easy to get student collaboration started. Set up student groups in your dedicated class space or easily share an edit link to kickstart a collaborative session with your class. Use Canvas brainstorm templates such as design thinking, KWL charts, or even the six thinking hats to guide student thinking together. And the great thing is that no matter where students are, they can all collaborate on the design anytime together. Students can see real-time editing by collaborators, write in the editor and leave comments and suggestions. Whether you're facilitating a live whole class collaboration or setting up group work remotely, Canva has you covered for the hybrid classrooms of today. And after the thinking comes the visual communication of learning. So what is visual communication? It is the act of sharing your thoughts, ideas or insights in a form that can be seen. Visual communication is more important than ever before and learning to communicate visually will set up your students for the future. To show you what we mean, let's use a simple example. Here is a description of an item or object and you're going to see if you can guess what it is. So listen carefully. It has four sides. Each of the sides is of equal length and they join together to make a right angle in every corner. The outside lines are black and the color on the inside is orange. Um, so let us know what you think that might be. You probably guessed it's a orange square with a black outline, but it took a lot of words and effort to get you there. It would have been much quicker and easier to just show you this image. And so visual communication comes with lots of benefits. It's clear and easy to digest. Individuals can recall information quickly. It's more engaging than text heavy materials and you can display progress facts and figures in an easy to understand way. In the classroom, visual communication is a great way for students to celebrate learning and demonstrate their knowledge. And with free access to thousands of quality educational templates in Canva, students can get started in any subject area. They can create infographics, presentations, posters, comic strips, videos, storyboards, reports, and lots more. And this comes to life as proud moments for students to share their final work, to polish their thinking into an assignment, piece of work or passion project they're proud of. Visual communication is an important skill for students to learn. With the ever increasing need for collaboration in the workplace across different job profiles, it is more important than ever before. Giving students the opportunity to learn how to communicate visually in the classroom will help set them up for their future careers. No matter what type of Canva templates your students use in the classroom, they can all be submitted back to you as a digital assignment. Designs can also be published and shared with a link. This is a great opportunity to share work with parents or engage the school community in new and exciting ways. And of course, you can download or print your designs too. Display classwork that students are proud of 
and create a sense of community and belonging. Canva takes the complexity out of infographic design for students with thousands of free icons and illustrations. They're a great way for students to communicate visual information and data. With a large range of templates, students can visually communicate learning in any subject area. Search infographics in the Canva template library to find, compare and contrast data timeline or process infographics. Infographic creation in the classroom helps students develop data visualization skills. Data visualization is more than just adding a chart to a slide. It is using data to tell a story or clearly communicate an idea. Together, they can be used to create impactful visualizations that are easy to understand. The real magic of creating data visualizations on Canva infographics is having the ability to combine both our powerful design suite with easy to use data tools. Students can easily edit the colors and the styles. And with Canva's chart tool, students can add all the data they like and keep the eye-catching look of their infographic. To do this, open the chart tool by going to the editor side panel, selecting more and selecting charts. You can select bar charts, line charts, pie charts, scatter plots to bring data to life. Once the chart is added, you can add your data in the table or connect a Google Sheet. The charts tool also has progress charts and pictogram tools to easily communicate visual data. They are easy to create and great for highlighting specific statistics in an eye-catching way. And the great thing about the Canva chart tool is that students can add data visualizations to any designs they create from presentations through to posters. So you can go to your workbook on page 34 if you'd like to try this chart tool for yourself. Thanks, Carly. We definitely have a lot of different types of chart tools in our Canva suite, which is really exciting. And now with Canva's new video suite, we've also made video creation in the classroom a lot easier. With the Canva video suite, it's easy for our teachers to create professional looking videos. Videos are great for delivering engaging instruction. You can use the power of multiple modalities to engage a new generation of learners. Provide your students with information in an easy to consume way that they appreciate and enjoy. Videos are perfect for flexible learning deliveries in hybrid classrooms and are highly accessible for students as they can view content anytime, anywhere and on any device. They are great for delivering flipped learning and with Canva, it's easy to publish a link that you can distribute to your students or embed in your learning management or class space. So let's have a look at some ideas that we can do with the Canva video suite in education. You can search Canva's library for templates to easily get started. Create and explain a video for a skill or process in any learning area. This is an accessible way for learners to watch and review learning content at their own pace. And the great thing about Canva is that you can easily use the recording studio for your demonstration right in the editor. You can also easily upload any video content from your device. Or what about creating a documentary style video to introduce a new topic or provide students with background knowledge? With Canva's large library of free video clips and images, you can create your own video in minutes and immerse your students in authentic learning experiences. Take them on a journey with real world examples and locations, or go back in time to a historical period. It's easy to get started with a template and you can add audio tracks and visual elements to create a professional looking video. And here is a bit of an example for you. So it's very easy to do. We have lots of images, videos that are ready to go for any of your learning content areas. So you can easily create an introductory video, a digital story and you can use the present and record tool to add your own narration over this as well. It's really easy to do and really effective. So let's have a look at how great Canva is for student video creation. It's really easy for students to collaborate on video projects as well as create their own individual projects. They can work on a video together no matter where they are. They can edit in real time and share feedback with comments right in the Canva editor. And you can see an example here on your screen. With Canva for Education, teachers can easily set up student groups in the dedicated class space and share designs for students to work on together. Or students can also kickstart their own video projects 
and add their classmates as collaborators into a design. Get students to record their own how-to explainer videos. This could be a great way to demonstrate learning. They can demonstrate how to do a science experiment, perform a skill, follow a process or solve a problem. With the Canva for Education account, they can also access that recording studio to record themselves right in the editor so it's really easy and they can create a professionally designed video. Or have students create their own digital story. They can creatively present their knowledge using authentic images and videos from the library and create a journey to different places, spaces, or historical periods. They can get really creative and effective. And the great thing about Canva is that they don't need to waste time searching for or importing media with our freely available assets in the library. We also have some great About Me templates for students. This could be a creative activity at the beginning of a school year or semester to get to know your students. They're also really good for customising for students to do personal video reflections on content that they are learning. So we're almost at the end of our workshop. Thank you for joining us today. Please don't go anywhere because we've got an amazing Q&A session. Please make sure that you sign up for Canva for Education by heading to canva.com forward slash edu sign up. Again, it's 100% free for all teachers and you can add your students. Districts can also be, be using Canva as well. Be sure to use your school email if you have one so you can register for free. There will be some checks. You and your students will get access to all the features and you'll be able to publish assignments from Canva and through your LMS and you can kickstart collaboration. And don't forget to join our Facebook group for teachers to learn more about Canva for Education, hear about our new product releases and ask questions of our education team. Thanks, Carly. And if you want more info on what's included for Canva for Education, check out these resources on Design School, which will talk you through all the features of our Canva for Education product. Thank you for joining our workshop today and thank you, Carly, for joining us as well. We hope you've enjoyed our jam-packed sessions on education. Now, don't go anywhere because we've got an awesome Q&A session. Thank you so much, education team. I certainly feel inspired to use visual thinking in the classroom and I'm not even a teacher. So like Belle mentioned, we are going to go ahead and jump right into that Q&A. Carly, I've got a question for you, and this one's from Charlotte. If I'm creating lesson plans in Canva, can other teachers see them? Great question, Charlotte. Let me explain how this works. So when you are designing in Canva, your designs are only visible to yourself until you choose to share them. If you'd like other teachers to view your lesson plans, you have a few options. Option one, you can select share from inside the editor and add the teacher you would like to share it with to that individual design. You might like to compile all your lessons into one folder and then share the entire folder with your colleagues. You can add your colleagues to your Canva for Education class in settings. You can add as many fellow teachers and students as you like to your class and it's always free. Once you've added them, you can then choose which designs and folders you want to share with them. Wow, thank you, Carly. That seems so easy and convenient for the classroom and the students. Next question, Carly, for you as well. This is from Carla. How can I get more out of Canva as a student? Wow, okay, so many ideas come to mind. We absolutely love hearing stories of lecturers and teachers being blown away by student assignments created in Canva. Visually communicating your ideas and learning doesn't just make it look beautiful. It also demonstrates to your assessor your deep understanding of the topic. For example, if you search for university research posters, you'll see some templates we've created, which really demonstrate how you can lay out research using grids and how you can visualize data using the charts tool. Another example could be taking your next analysis project to the next level by doing a SWOT analysis, a competitor analysis, a five forces analysis, any kind of analysis really visually using a Canva template or using Canva shape elements. The other thing is that we hear a lot that group projects can be really painful, especially when assigned to a group with strangers. For your next assignment, 
you could start it in Canva. Share the edit link to your design with your group mates. Use the notes feature to assign pages. You can use comments to ask questions and leave feedback. And you can also see each other working live in real time. And another hot tip, if you're worried about another group member stuffing up your work, you can go to file version history and you can actually click back through the versions of your designs as each update is made. And just one last tip, why not add a recording of yourself to your notes presentation? Really demonstrate your knowledge by speaking to it. Fantastic answer, Carly. If I was a teacher, I'd give you A+. Plus. Also, revision history is my favourite feature. I actually work quite closely with Julie and she constantly ruins my designs. Belle, this one's for you. <laughs> Where can I go to get inspiration for using Canva in education? Okay, great question. Thanks, Leighton. You can join our Facebook group for teachers. This is an amazing space. It's called the Canva Teacher Community. Go into Facebook and have a look and we can pop in a link into our chat as well. There are amazing things being shared from educators all around the world and amazing things they are doing in their classrooms. So please go and have a look and get inspired. We also have some awesome weekly webinars to help you get started with Canva for Education if you're new to it. It's also a great place to find out about all the latest product updates. As you can see, we've got amazing things that we keep on releasing and amazing features as well. Or you can ask our team any questions. And what's really exciting is that we have our newest Canva communities for educators. We have some dedicated communities for Brazil, Russia, Indonesia, Philippines, Argentina, France, India, and Germany. So please go into our teachers' Facebook community to get the links for these and connect with fellow educators. Awesome. Thanks so much, Belle. I'm so happy to hear we have so many resources for education. Someone in the chat actually said, you guys don't deserve an A+, you deserve an A++++. So congrats, you two. Anyways, off to the next question. This one's for Carly from Tamara. What types of documents are best for engaging students? I feel like I use poster too much. Well, firstly, I'm sure your posters are very engaging. As you've seen today, we know students love video and you might be thinking, oh, wow, that would take a lot of time to prepare. But I'd really encourage you to start small and give it a go as you'll be surprised by just how quickly you can create a really short explainer video in Canva. My next suggestion would be presentations, especially taking advantage of the ability to embed videos, link out to other activities, add in some bitmojis, add in some GIFs. My next suggestion would be brainstorms. So you can invite your students into your Canva design and you can use that to ideate on it as a group. And if you're looking for something to print, flashcards can be really fun and super simple to create in Canva. Love that. Flashcards are so good. Takes me back. Belle, I've got a question for you. Would you ever offer certifications for teachers? And that one's from Cyan. Oh, good one, Cyan. This is a really good question. We get asked about this a lot, and it's a very popular request from teachers. Now, I can't say much about this yet, but what I can say is that there's going to be some great new courses and tutorials for teachers and students to learn how to use Canva in new and exciting ways in the classroom. So keep an eye out at designschool.canva.com and join our teacher Canva community to get the latest updates on what might be coming in this area. Ooh, I can't wait to learn more about this. All right, we're wrapping up with one last question. Carly, this goes to you. This is from Ethan. I want to use Canva in the classroom, but I'm concerned about privacy. Can you convince me? Hi, Ethan. Yes, classroom privacy is also something top of mind for us. We designed Canva for Education with student privacy in mind. Canva for Education goes through an annual certification process with I Keep Safe to ensure compliance with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, aka COPPA, and the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, in the USA. As part of this, we ensure that schools have control of student data at all times. 
We also don't market to students or profile students and to ensure their privacy is protected while they're using our platform. We have a range of security measures. We are ISO 27001 certified to protect student data. And we can also sign data processing agreements, including the national DPA in the US with school districts if this is a requirement for your school. Training on children and student privacy is mandatory for all Canva employees. And there's a range of information available on our website and Canva's privacy and security practices, including our privacy policy and our security centre. We're always happy to answer any specific questions as well that your schools or school districts might have. You've convinced me, Carly. Thank you very much, Carly and Belle. Put your virtual hands together for the education team, a bunch of legends. It's been a pleasure being one of your MCs today. Mā te wā. I'm Clayton Cribben. And I'm Julie Floater. Happy creating. Happy creating.